Hi Prasad, it's lovely to have you as a special guest in our podcast and thanks for accepting our request. Hey, thanks Swami. Thanks for inviting me. I think it's my first podcast experience. I'm so glad I'm doing it with you. <laughs> Having done your management from IIM Ahmedabad, worked in businesses, hospitality, pharma, where did you get this calling to get into sports development and sports marketing? Swami, I think it all began because, you know, I'm a complete sports nut. Probably it's easy to count the sports that I don't follow, you know. Otherwise, like from your Formula 1 to NBA to rugby to football to golf, like, you no know, cricket, tennis, I follow everything. So, in the sense, like, you no, know, I always uh, was fascinated by this athletes, their performance. Because in my, in my opinion, actually, the athletes are real heroes. You know, unlike your, let's say, uh, heroes like, like uh, films or elsewhere, you know, these guys are the real because they're performing live in front of you, you know, and you can see their, I think, the performance live. And there's no rehearsal for them, you know, like uh, they don't get 10 takes to do one take thing. So it was always, I think, you know, I was fascinated by the, their performance and, and, you know, how excited I was as a fan. So imagine if I'm actually part of that, uh, let's say, industry, how much more it will be oh, f- fun and uh, energetic. So we felt, you know, what is that about a 130 tour, uh, you know, people country, can we produce like, you know, handful of at least champions in each, each sport? And I realized, I think, you know, it is bound to happen. So why not we, we be a catalyst? You know, instead of always cribbing and say after every Asian game, sitting, you know, hey, why didn't this happen? Who is the thing? You know, say like, let's, let's take the plunge, dirty your hands and see like, you no, know, what we can do. I mean, it's better than doing nothing. Okay. Well, we may, may not achieve our objective, but at least something will come out of it. So this is always in the back of the mind. So you won't believe this is my 50th birthday gift for myself. In 2013, <laughs> I said, this if I don't do it, that's fair. that means I can't do it ever. Either do it now or never. So I remember speaking to my wife and if we, we both are, you know, we are Buddhist practitioners. So any major days we take in life, we always chant first. So we both chant for six months to be clear, to be confident again, this is your, your calling card. Because once we take the plunge, no going back. No, there's no thing. So I remember chanting for six months and finally I was that time with a myelin which is a, you know, like a, a world's third largest generic company as a global business said, I've been pretty well, you know, like I was flying every week to a new country, like, you know, I can throw a dart on the world map and say, I can go to this country. You know, it doesn't be easy to leave uh, the job. And that time when I left, I didn't, I didn't know where to start. I don't know where the, uh, even the starting block, uh, you know, to join the race. So I kind of did a uh, dabble lens, bit of a consultancy here and there just to keep the bills going. Then I had an excellent meeting with my one batchmate called Atul Pandey, who was that time just uh, resigned from uh, 10 Sports uh, CEO. So we got together and said, like, even though we're not good friends, but I think, you know, we said, okay, let's do something in the sports. So that's where the journey of the uh, brand, uh, this uh, uh, sports life began. So we said, like, hey, let's choose an Olympic sports because, you know, cricket is saturated. And it's like cricket in a BCCI is that. 800 pound gorilla in, the, you know, in this room, you know, we, we, we can't touch them. So we, we formed this company in 2015, beginning. And luckily, within a few months, still we got a funding from my former employer, from Arminda Pharma family. So that really kind of bolstered our confidence level. So we went and acquired the first, the volleyball league. And uh, you won't believe the account. I remember the date, February 25th, I think, we had the press conference to announce very proudly our first league with the Federation president, all of them, the full press at the Hotel Lalit in, uh, in Delhi. And that evening, we get a news that saying that the secretary of the same Federation held a parallel press conference in another hotel to announce another league. And a month before that, Swami, we paid the Federation 11 crores as a DD, not in a check. At the final uh, so-called EC committee meeting, where you know the of the volleyball federation, my partner went and gave this uh, DD for eleven crores. So I believe when this money was given to the federation, that's when the the president and the secretary, they both got suspicious of each other because they never seen this kind of money because federation gets some 70, 80 lakhs every year from the government. Suddenly they got eleven crores money with their own money, so they thought the other guy is going to eat up. So they both sacked each other and the federation got dissolved and we even do a legal, legal case. And the, and the funny thing is the case is still going on. 
and we spent so many things must have spent almost two, close to 2 crores on the case so far it's still going on and the league was sold to the another uh, agency and the company and those guys decided to go ahead they launched the league they did one season then got shut down so which we don't know do it because we said we were very clear if we do it let's not i think not do anything which is like suspicious or like you no know, which may not sustain so we didn't go ahead that time so then likely like we, we didn't uh, then we had to fight to get the money back then the money came back we didn't know what to do then likely like you no know, we looked around and the, we, we found the pbl is like you no know, uh, as being by the time it been launched by the federation themselves and we found they they found very painful to do it themselves so we met the president and said hey why don't you give it to us you know you need professional guys to run so likely agreed this is now i remember 2016 september i think 18 or 19 we signed the agreement with the bi and that's yeah that's how the, the journey began but uh, like i said that you know my this is my f- uh, like a sequel my first was like 2009 1998 you i think you remember i was selling resorts and um, selling sort was a great stint for all of us we learned a lot of things did some amazing stuff i was chosen as a marketing sales said i was i was there i did a great job for two years working with the great norman all these people you know we launched uh, only uh, by invitation membership so i said hey let's do something so i got to this uh, company called greyhound marketing and then uh, we got an opportunity to uh, co market adp tournament along with img was the main company but we also every day i got about two three uh, sponsors through me but some of the what are interesting is if you do sponsorship marketing what you do the organizers give you so many hoardings ticket logo those standard deliverables what i done is suppose if you are like one of my let's say paris spirulina my client so they launched the paris spirulina so their posting was this is equal to your entire day's protein requirement so otherwise if you have to eat some one half kilos of you know lee green leaves all the stuff but this is one tablet give them so what it is like now we actually uh, uh brought them as a sponsor for this thing and we did a promotion of entire one week to promote to show how this capsule can take care of your thing so we had a a remember small contest where you know we we put a one half two kilos of uh, vegetables and green leaves in one bag and a tablet as well we asked people can you eat all this in in 5 minutes time nobody could eat but it was but this is what you supposed to eat every day how, what do you do then he said hey there's a easier way to eat then we get tablet said can you take this now yes this this tablet can be taken in in, uh, in 10 seconds so let this know for each brand we actually got something tangible out of the tournament instead of just getting the hoardings logo here the meet and greet all the stuff we even launched uh, the dth you know like in uh, 2000 uh, in uh, at, at the tournament so that so then but unfortunately like after 5 years i think you know like uh, i had to wind up and uh, because singapore tourism board came on board as my uh, partner unfortunately within one year they they actually uh, uh, walked out so the bug was always there in sport so 2015 turned to be a right moment to get in prasad talk to me about how did the premier badminton league happen what was your dream what was your vision and uh, how did this get into such a big event and scale that uh, you had planned for walk me through it you know sami to when we began there no template because you know this league except for the ipl ipl honestly while it's a big success it had all the ingredients the cricket is already uh, being paid for 50 years time there large fan following even people like you and me we're all die hard fans like i i i traveled to london to watch indian world cup matches in sydney world cup matches dubai also went to recently so it is only given thing there so it's just the timing that lalit modi came and put together but to create a like no non uh, uh, cricket olympic sport league like this of this you know where you have to uh, where we don't have a legacy where we don't have a, like you know even the federation not the strong like it's not a, even today badminton federation gets hardly some 10 10 to 14 crores a year from the government of india in fact to tell you in the last two uh, five years our investment in the ecosystem of badminton is close to 200 crores we and the teams together and the official figure for the same thing the last 5 years government of india spent 67 crores in badminton so we outspent the government of india by but three times so we didn't have template but what we what committed to is a thing you know we believe we get great product we have to create it right now so we will do whatever it takes for example you know like uh, there are so many naysayers 
at one point because i don't know if you're aware that in 2013 the league was launched by federation in partnership with another person but then it collapsed because the guy did not have the money to run it so then 2015 16 when we launched it the guy came back to sue us but when we launched when the first year went out very well then he came back to sue the thing you know sad lord and then also he took some help of some people in the you know federation also so you know it's uh, every single day there was some nasty surprise awaiting us but then you know like no but now this whole idea of a thing of creating something like no because also we met gopichan and uh, we were completely bowled over by him when we met him in 2015 so and we also uh, brought him on as a mentor so we have seen what is done in uh, in those before the 10th year time as one single person if he could do it because today what all you see in the badminton ecosystem today entire national team are all his students he he trained them at his academy in hyderabad all by himself with very little support of the you no know, federation so we said if, if we could do that hey let's just you know let's think little uh, beyond that and uh, luckily what happened is like you no know, good or bad i think you no know, we we put the player salary at a level where it was unheard of in the industry because even today if a player wins a big tournament let's say even at sara neva she gets 20 lakhs or 24 lakhs but here we were giving one and a half crores to the, the icon player category icon player gets one and a half crores one month one month tournament and even the lowest level a guy who's may not even play in the league gets 20 lakhs so that and press a prize money six crores the team may win till get three crores so whichever team won the first year they broke even the very first year broke even <laughs> so though it hurt us financially in the sense like no we didn't really uh, uh, figure out the what is the thing but it uh, it attracted the best talent so we had a very first year lee chong wee who is the iconic player like lee and the lindan rivalry like a nadal versus like no roger federer thing he came in played like he was so thrilled to be in the very first match and surprisingly he lost to shrikant in the <laughs> first match so that really helped the indian fans fired up you know here is a that time shrikant was still not a that a big name like you know saying to beat uh, lin chi chong wee it was a good start for us and then 2016 in uh, sindhu won the silver medal so from then i think you no know, it uh, uh, this this become global and today I'm very very proud to say that our league is the world's number one league there's no other league because in the leagues in the other countries happen over the weekend it ha- like malaysia china it happens every weekend or a period of 6 months time so uh, lee chongi might play this weekend for a for a club a but he will not be there next weekend it could be someone else will play so this is the only format like you no know, like ipl you know where we for the entire one month there are teams auction people buy them they stay together play every single day you play finals also this is champion and they leave so that way the format is worked also we uh, we also made uh, little more exciting by what do you call it trump concept uh, call it trump concept so there is a match called trump match so the trump match when you play trump match the uh, the, the the team which places trump on the on the pers- on the player if they win they get two points if they lose they get minus one so that really may that really like you no know, uh, kept the excitement because that way every team fights the last ma- last match so there were times when the team was trailing by 03 went on to like you know to <laughs> again get the five winning so that's yeah i think you know we and uh, we made sure i think in the same time indian talent has grown because i can give example like let's say satvik today who is the world number 5 in the doubles india never had any doubles uh, legacy in the past i remember 2017 i think he got 8 lakhs in the auction 2019 he got 65 lakhs in the auction his parents called and scolded us saying you spoiling a child this guy is only 19 year old guy abil abil he want to buy a super car something they said you spoiling my child <laughs> give the money <laughs> Can you imagine parents calling and saying you know you spoiling a child and that today the guys are these guys are world beaters now today if india is winning as a team as a in the communal games in games doubles also like no uh, contributed earlier we had a single player but we had a so we see, similarly lakshya sen has grown today he's a next next big thing in the, in the thing and we had the guy called pranay in season 3 he was unbeatable he bet every single player in the like uh, the tournament then he really believed himself and he went out become world number 8 after that same as sai pranith 
he went he won the uh, world championship bronze medal so what happened like you know, we given the platform where what happens is like you know, when this players go to normal tournament they have their nervous because they have to win every, every every round to get to thing only if you win you know if you lose the first round you you're gone you, you have to go back to the you know like home and then come the next one but here what happens if you're in the team you you guaranteed to seven match guaranteed for you you're playing every all seven matches so even if you lose this match you know you you getting one more chance so then you know you can you, know, you can fix you can fix what you mistakes you found in the last match or you can experiment here there no fear here and you'll get your money even if you lose you get your money back you, you get your full money there no any deductions so that help the players to really and the other thing is like uh, uh, what really helped us is we are putting the world's best people together like you know in a team there are five indians and five foreign players so the foreign players could be taiju world number 1 anderson so these other five indians are are spending one whole month with this people in the dressing room in the dugout in the hotel in the meetings so they learn so much and they train together so they they, they learn so much together from these people also what we found out later because they came to know them very well later on when they paid them in the tournaments they not intimidated by the person in the taiju or a anderson we not intimidating like no as uh, as in the past because now they played together they spend time together they know each other uh, my next question prasad is uh, you've been instrumental in building a world class uh, badminton academy with uh, polela gopichand so what was the experience like and why did you think this was important and talk to me about working with uh, polela gopichand you know what i think uh, when i met gopi that i remember the very uh, first meeting itself felt man i think this man must be must get his due in terms of recognition visibility you know today i think there's no comparable uh, sports icon in the country for what are worth you talk about the cricket i think this person i think you know the, the last count brought about 45 medals for the country 40 medals including olympic world championship do you know that from the 2012 onwards every world champion we, we got medals any every world championship we got a medal they're all his students so but he did all this from one academy so i i told gopi gopi is not fair you know your so your expertise knowledge should also spread so but he wasn't very clear how to go about it because he said it's a headache because see i think one more thing which people don't realize you know gopi apart from being in a coach he survived 20 years in the system and produces people so he dealt with i know in the last 20 years he dealt with six different presidents of the federation president so he yeah six different presidents have come in the last 20 years time so he had to also manage these people to ensure the the uh, team selection teams go entries they play you know getting the money to even travel okay now they're more comfortable even till 5 years back they had to fight for tickets they had to fight for accommodation i'll give you a small anecdote uh, swami in uh, 2018 i think i went to all england championship with gopish and an entire indian team i went with them so they saying so i stayed in same hotel with staying second day i came back to the hotel and we all came back and i saw sindhu stretching herself in the in the corridor after the match in the corridor with the trainer because the rooms are too small so i felt so embarrassed so i i i told them okay i'm going to book a separate room where at my cost post life's cost separate room for the place to stretch can you imagine by the time she's already a, a, a olympic silver medalist she's the pride of the country she's stretching in like a, like you know in the, in the corridor there is the other other uh, uh, other teams are staying in a hyatt whatever we stayed in this small hotel because this is a this is a budget they have so i tell gopi please spread your net wider so they give for example so far entire talent came from close to hyderabad you know because that's how you set up the cake all the guys all with they all tell you guys or uh, sikan sai pranit all these guys are there so nice boy thing so he finally convinced him luckily then up government has built a fantastic sports complex and in, in greater noida almost uh, in 45 acres 260 crore spending and a spectacular stadium they built so that time the is officer whom we approach a very enthusiastic guy so he agreed readily he said I'll, i'll give you the entire stadium for you guys to make a, a academy here and normally as a government uh, plan this uh, 
a protocol they suppose do through the rfp and now for a tender based but he said in this case because he is gopichand he said i will waive all this i'll give it to you straight we'll go straight to the mou so we we signed up and uh, i'm telling you it's like uh, you, you got to see it it is a 60000 square feet stadium 70 feet tall roof 4500 feet seater capacity fully air conditioned and they built 15 courts for us so march 3rd 2017 we launched our academy the first academy of gopi outside hyderabad our logic also was maybe i think you know like you now this uh, because the bone structure uh, you know uh, the body build is different in the north maybe you'll find a different champions here for example i remember <laughs> uh, gopi trying to teach uh, srikant sai pranith sindhu to be aggressive on the court because from being the south and thing they're not aggressive by nature so i told gopi on the other hand in north you don't have to teach them what to be aggressive on the court <laughs> after every point she'll go look at the his opponent <laughs> and maybe say something in hindi which is like no <laughs> uh, bcmc kind of thing <laughs> so at least well, one portion you don't have to worry about that they will they should be aggressive apart from their you know their body structure bone structure everything so that's what we we launched it unfortunately again now it's shut because the covid happened in 2020 we already losing one crore every on that because it is not a commercial academy we were choosing place only through trials to produce champions and numbers fixed total number 80 out of 80 30 was scholarships so but we are spending almost 1.6 crores every year on that so 2021 when this came this guys want to revise the figures and they were double the lease all we had to pay for ac also it is becoming really unviable for us we we shut down last year for 3 years we produce about 14 champions who could become the next champions of country at the under under 11 under 13 under 15 under 17 i do on one 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 incident i think uh, every three months we used to have a trials so what is to be so draw drop five students take fresh five students so i remember once we used to trial one parent came to the our office with our bags everything he tells us he proudly in hindi aaj mere bachche ka exam tha maine usko bola exam bhul jao yahan chalte hain so usne exam chhod diya yahan aaya i said pagal hai kya like no why doing that you know you should at least let the exam be over then he said yeah isko isko badminton khelna hai isko bas yahi khelna hai so a guy just came from meerut somewhere with a baggage to you know he said he he, he said like ye to aaj se hi rahega <laughs> he assumed that he'll get a entry he said he'll stay here only luckily he got through then he like no yeah but he didn't have hostel that time so this guy had to take a rooms close by to to train prasad if uh, india has to become a sports superpower what do you think are the fundamental infrastructure and ecosystems that need to be put in place what's lacking today and what needs to be done he just you know something you know like you no know, it has to start at the grassroots i think swami you can see today what's happening is you know there there are a lot of cherry picking happening suppose there is an athlete who comes to this level which of which of way through a one coach or one parent thing then you have a, a corporates like adanis jsws they swoop on them take them they are anyway they reach already the international level hmm. and then what happened when they become medal winners they take credit for it but the journey begins from the age of 9 10 swami so you need this let's say today if there are 1 lakh players playing badminton in india country okay suppose if, if tomorrow if we say more than 40 lakh children are playing the badminton the level then the competition at every level ensures the guy who is going up is the best like other day okay uh, in fact i can uh, i can open my own whatsapp eyes i gave so many suggestions to the government of india over a period of time every time go to delhi i meet the authorities keep giving them ideas and tips to them okay so i told them for example there's something called a khelo india games is the biggest event in the country right now mr modi's pet event all the uh, the school students come and compete in this one i told them take your any one event let's say 100 meters the guy who won last year in a khelo india games compare his his uh, his timing with a europe level asian level and see what the gap because if is if he if he is a champion of india as under 17 champion compare with the europe and asian they get in the and then see the is the gap bridgeable the gap is a bridgeable 
Even if it's because they were giving 5 lakhs per year to the student of the who wins it. So, but are you investing money on a guy who can't uh, make it to the Olympics? But the, that because today the competition is not so, not so stiff. But suppose this guy had to go through, at every stage he had to fight very hard. Then the timing which he comes will be maybe closer to the Asian level, whatever. So, you need the competition at the every level. That will fail competition. Uh, India, one more point, realizes the huge of uh, age fraud. Fudging, age fudging. You know, this is so much in North because logic is if you become even a state champion, it seems you get a sports quota job in the government. So what they do is in the under 15 May, they put a 17 year old guy. They bring a uh, fraud certificate. So you play under 17, uh, under 15, but you're a 17 year old guy. So you win the tournament. Same the ratio. So under 19, you're already a 21 year old guy, but you come with a under 19 certificate, you play, you win. So you get a certificate saying that you're a state champion go to some food corporation of India or a sale or a Punjab police and gets a job. So the process genuine students like this suffer. So you need the, the grassroots level and plus no, Swami, where are the, where are the grounds of children to play? See, the, the best place to you know, perform like and learn a game is a school. And most schools don't even have a game, uh, uh, playgrounds. And most cities also, the playgrounds are disappearing. And uh, every city has only one big stadium. Even in your uh, Chennai, you only have a uh, Jai uh, New Stadium only the, for, after all these years, you only have one big stadium. So you need infrastructure. You need, I think, you know, incentive for the children thing. Today, parents are going to pay. In fact, I suggested to them, suppose if, if, the, if, the, if the parent puts a child in the academy and paying 8 rupees per month, with them tax breaks. Just like you're giving a tax break on health insurances, this way, give the uh, a tax breaks to the, to the parents who are investing money on the child. Just imagine if the, every child, in fact, our philosophy is like, you know, forget about the winning and the uh, champions. Every child, if you plays a sport regularly, seriously, he's only a winner in life. This is the philosophy of Gopichan. The moment the child starts playing a game seriously, he's a winner in life. Because it doesn't matter even if he doesn't win the medals, but he, he learns so many things in, through sport, which helps you to become better human being, better employee, better entrepreneur, you know, better leader in the, in the world. Because, well, like say, if my daughter tomorrow fails in one subject in 10th standard, I can hide it. Nobody may know, need not know. But if my child plays a, a, in tournament and badminton in the public, if she loses, she's losing in front of everybody. The whole world knows that she, she lost. So my, my daughter also knows she lost in front of people. She has to come back, swallow the defeat, Next day, go back to the again to the court, train again, again enter tournament, play again, win. So there are things only a sport can teach. So it is imperative that you know every child. In fact, I think like the right to education, they must be right to play, act. Every child, because when a child plays a sport, apart from all these things, he becomes he becomes a healthy person physically, mentally a healthy person. So imagine. We even told somebody like, no, it, it may save you 2% of healthcare costs after 10 years time. If one, one generation goes through playing a sport seriously, you know, everybody, so they become healthier. Today, India is a diabetic capital, you know, like hypertension capital, cardio capital. So if you can bring down the number of this diabetic patients, number of things, uh, your, your pressure on the healthcare system, we're not like a, a Western country there, you know, we have a such a star. Uh, solid, I think, in a healthcare system. So, this is where I said, I think, you know, and the plus the money has to come at the grassroots level. Today, the money, Sindhu gets 5 crores. How will it help? If you give Sindhu 5 crores, it won't bring 10 medals. But with the 5 crores, I can produce at least 100 champions at the grassroots level. So, so those are misplaced, I think, you know, priorities right now in the country. So, schools should take initiative. That's why, uh, I don't know if you told you, there's a school called Gaudium. You can just uh, Google after. Gaudium is a school which I, I was involved from the scratch. See that. So students in Gaudium have to play two sports every single day. It's a spectacular school. It is produced to produce champions. It has 21 academies inside the school, including a sports academy. Yeah, it has the best gymnastic academy in the entire country. So it has to be a concerted effort, I think, Swami, like now, there are parents willing to put children. But uh, for example, 
I can't take my today. The, the nearest academy for me is about for eight kilometers from here. My daughter has come back at four o'clock. She has to change, then get into a car, and again go to this academy in the traffic and come back. And these are these are it's not safe to send your child along with a driver. Somebody has to go. So we need to create the opportunities for children. Just let them play, 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 play. Out of this ten thousand people, ten will definitely be champions. So that culture is missing right now. I think sporting coaching. It's all credit taking culture right now. You wait for somebody to bring the child to this level, then you grab the person and say, "Hey, come, he's my product." Whether Jinders, the Radhani, Reliance, or like now all the people. Prasad, whenever we think of uh, sports, coach and coaches are the most important foundation for building champions, and. what's really the infrastructure in india how do you really get certification for the best coaches who is the best coach so what needs to be done here true because right now why don't have coaches in fact there's a huge problem for us in badminton because like uh, we uh, in india i think uh, 40% badminton coaches are foreigners indonesians malaysians who know who because those countries have a lot of coaches that come here plus because you know the ecosystem is not there if uh, suppose You played badminton, let's say at state level. You retired now. So if there's opportunity for you to become coach, if you can earn enough money, you know, for your family, for your suppose if you can earn eight, eight, nine lakhs a year, why would you take up the coaching? Because it's a game which you played, which it's a game which you like. So if you can make money out of the game, why won't you become a coach? So then he will certainly and probably go through some uh, certif- uh, certification course, whatever. But today, even today, Swami is sad. I think you no. Know, uh, Average coach gets about three, three, three lakhs a year salary. Three lakhs. And now, uh, when you bring a foreign coach, we we pay seven, eight lakhs foreign coaches. So three lakhs. He he may be earning more by going to some uh, call center, you know, executive, right? Same guy. If he gets trained himself, you know, go join some call center or a customer service something, or even a swiggy something, maybe get more money than that. So. That's I think today. That's why I think you now Gopi himself is launching his own coaching academy right now. Coaches, coaches, because he himself is uh, launching four more academies. And incidentally, I, what I didn't talk about so far is my dream was to take Gopi's brand international. I done that in the last October ninth. We launched Gopi's academy in Dubai. Gopi, we formed a company in Gopi is also a stakeholder company. We formed a company in Dubai. We launched the first academy in Dubai. Now there are four academies in Dubai. And September third for launching Qatar, Bahrain. We'll go to Saudi. We'll go to Kuwait. We'll go to Oman. By twenty twenty four, we'll have at least twenty centers teaching uh, Gopi's curriculum in these countries. And now we also converted his coaching into a two twenty five page manual. We create a manual which will be distributed very very shortly, and we're going to create an app. So every child. Where whether it's in Qatar, Bahrain, or thing, he will start with the how to hold the grip from Gopi's knowledge expertise. Today, what happens is you suppose today you put your child in some neighborhood guy, so your child is learning from that guy based on his expertise, based on his proficiency, right? That is the that is the he learning basis from them. Suppose the same child were to learn the basics from the someone like Gopi's thing, manual, it will be different, you know, results. Also, other thing what happening is, let's say if you send your child to neighborhood academy, the guy suppose he played five years back retired, his knowledge learning is stopped. That's why he is teaching you from the expired knowledge. Whereas Gopi, being a national coach even today, he is traveling, he is still training children, uh, people. He is watching Koreans, Japanese, Indonesians. He's got a team who will study their their tactics and you no know, becomes input for him, and he upgrades his own. Training because what is training in Hindu five years back is different now. So in the sense, you know, when with Gopi's uh, coaching manual, which will be updated every three months time, we are constantly giving the latest techno training now, which is not the case with a, you know, any other na- neighborhood academy. So we plan to launch an app very soon, like you know, with with all this stuff later on. Uh, one of the things that uh, really uh, you know worries me, and uh, I think it's important. to put this in perspective uh there's just that 1% of the sports people who become champions but the rest of the 
who have a dream who have an aspiration uh, really don't make it to the top so what does it take for the society for the sports authority to take care of these people and what needs to be done there brilliant i think somi you reach a very uh, hit a valid point i'll i'll share the article with you after the this call gopi uh, this bothers gopi all the time he's saying if i get 100 students who are into my academy eventually one may go to become the olympic champion for the other 99 hello you there ah. so uh, the other 99 they leave the sport with the bitter feelings because they feel i i fail so he is worried more about the people who don't make it than the people who make it so i think you know we are actually constantly i think you know uh, counsel them saying play the sport you know which will make you a better what are you going to do in life later on while you may not i think become champion but wherever you go you can actually become i think and now also like now we trying to create a pathway for them in the in the in the system of being they can become a sports science uh, or they can become the fitness trainer they can become coacher they can become you know like a counselor themselves so that's one thing and secondly just two months back we decided that we will approach nhrd you know the national hrd body to say why don't you guys you know consciously take sports person into the into jobs private jobs if you, if there are two guys with all equal qualifications if you, if you have a guy who played sport till a certain level take that guy because he is bring this additional you know traits 1 2 3 4 he is a team player he knows how to jo- open challenges he is disciplined he dedicated so we actually want to i think knows uh, talk to the this nhrd and say like no consciously take sports persons plus now we also looking at the vocational you know like for these people in fact this was dinos kagar mohammed yunus nobel uh, doctor is winner from bangladesh so he was uh, in a webinar about one year back with uh, abhinav bindra myself gopichan this guy and uh, that day we brought the lady that uh, uh, jyot uh, shindya sister she is a madhya pradesh minister of this education so she took the idea of that she said like now here after all the students who are training in our academies in madhya pradesh or coaches we will provide them parallelly vocational training you know because they play for 6 hours time so based on their skill sets give them the training thing maybe some language skills could be like you no know, public speaking could be some you know vocational thing so this is something we should i think you know we should happen i think this we are really ready in the policy as more people come to this sport ecosystem when they leave they should have some pathway we should not feel like shit i made a mistake by joining sport what is usually that one one thing is they you know if indian sports is ecosystem is a gross all these people can become part of the system itself you know they can become the coaches counselors whatever thing you know and uh, they can in fact now many of them become the entrepreneurs like uh, you know many of them become entrepreneurs they coach they'll they'll find some sponsor and now who will give them 40 50 lakhs to set up an academy and start training so that that's how it's happening morally by the benevolence of some people but it should become this way i think corporates can come in css can come in say like now we will support prasad my next question is uh, sponsorships and you know corporates are really the bedrock of some of these sponsorships and most often a lot of money gets thrown into the biggest sports so what is needed for corporates to really build a ecosystem of great sportsmen which is probably beyond cricket uh, if we have to become a sports power of you know scale that the world looks up to so what needs to be done by brands and corporates to really support sports in the country so even if you are a promoter of a large company even if you have a five five and crore csr money you can't put the money where like you know you, are, you you want to like spend because this country still has so many other challenges basic challenges so governments because you know like not the easy easy money for them is a csr fund very very few really company only tata only tata group has for last 50 40 years time like no they been actually actually involved in the sport for all these years you know at a grassroots level in jamshedpur they run academies all the stuff but you know here as an entrepreneur suppose if if you know if you spend the money with the minister's conscience you know tomorrow you can get something by out of him so we will you spend money if you give that two crores 
build a school in the in the minister's constituency you know that thing tomorrow like you can go to the guy and say like no ask for favors so there's not i think so now i think that's why we are we just i think there's a i got a somebody approached me for a business idea where they want to create a like a a forum where i think you know we can actually start crowd crowdsource funding linked back to back today there are people who do or, or do the thing but here suppose tomorrow if i start myself crowdsource funding i can take that money and also invest on that at least i know who they are i know who who got the potential i know i, I know where uh, where to put them the nutrition everything i can take care of that so we we try to plug this gaps in see india we have to find solutions slowly i very difficult to find transformations or solutions like you know at this kind of level but i think yes i i i you talk about sponsorship i want to give an anecdote i met one uh, company in chennai some few years back for a sponsorship actually so i know they spent about 4 5 crores every year on a csk even though their brand is not because after the ipl is over if you do a survey to recall brand recall the brand never be recall because there are uh, honestly out of 109 brands which invested in ipl only 11 brands are recall because those lead brands also spend more money promoting themselves <laughs> so but i asked uh, the marketing head why does this guy spend money when you know thing sir that guy spends money because he has got dhoni's number in his contact list every year he sits with dhoni for to watch a match he takes selfie with dhoni he can call dhoni <laughs> so the guy didn't to spend 4 crores just to have the relationship with with dhoni same with virat kohli whatever so you know today even the society has not really opened up to the know to the importance of sport just beyond the sport as a what sport can do to society there is a waking up but not the authorities are like now now because i i, I remember uh, so three months back i got the 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 big man sports authority of india uh, sports ministry called me and said prasad i want to write my own kras help me for next three years time So I said, like, no, have only one thing you care. Don't go with viewership. Go with participation. Number one. Today, today, if I, if I, if a sport, each sport has so many people playing. After three years, just see how many people are pursuing the sport. That's the growth. Once done, that happens. Everything will just you know get pushed up like it will work out. So don't go because they think you know Kabaddi has one point five TRP rating, so successful. But how many people take up Kabaddi? How many academies have come up? Whereas, if it's a cricket, there is soccer, there is hockey, there is badminton. There are people. They, it's it's a participative uh, growth. People take up the game after watching it. What would be your advice to an eighteen-year-old in an university or college today? University or college today? I think. What well, I think, you know, just uh, just forty-five years old as a human being. if you if you can fortify yourself as a human being because you don't know what challenges might come even if you go to the best job in the world you may face challenges okay tomorrow even if you may get married to the your uh, best uh, whatever person you know at every walk of life you'll face challenges today a uh, some living in a world, sad world where you have a people like iit and scavenging suicide can you imagine like you no know, guy who's going to iit and suicide you think the guy's body made in life this because like human beings i think you know while you may go materialistically in terms of a thing but as human being you become weaker and weaker why do you think today why do this with the trolling on the online because you're un- you're unhappy in who will today if i'm talking to you my tone the lord know will be depend on like what i'm inside right so today i think you know that the problem will like, you know because the pressure on the world So, if you can actually fortify yourself, like no, you can overcome anything because you don't know what may come in your way. Similarly, even what you're achieving also, you can achieve much more than what you what you what you can can achieve without anything. So, just strengthen your human values, you know, and just you know, make sure you're in a you know good frame of mind all the time, which is not affected by your which is not affected by your happiness around you because if your mind can keeps changing based on what happened the last incident. then you you let the leaf in the you know in the, in the wind was be like the banyan tree which like you now which can withstand anything if you can do that that's why the school which i which i talked about godium 
uh, instantly Gaudium, the name, logo is done by Ananta. Just talk to him. He's involved from the day one. So this school focus on children's happiness. It's called uh, the baseline is called sculpting happy sculpting happy minds because our logic is simple. Children are born happy, but as they grow, they lose the power of the happiness because of the other pressures around them. And then after we become adults, we go to Isha Foundation, go to Art of Living, Art of Living to find the foundation happy again, which is only with you in the beginning. So if I can retain the power to stay happy from the childhood, so I tell uh, the school, I think, you know, instead of just an engineer, engineer, a doctor, happy engineer, happy doctor, happy pilot, happy sports person, happy. So add the happy to the what you're doing. So that is what I think, you know, today is required. I think, you know, you just fortify yourself as a human being. So my next uh, rapid fire question is, uh, Prasad, what does success mean to you? Well, success is man, I think, you know, if you can just go to the bed with a smile on your face. Because it's not only the, uh, what do you think? That day, even that day, like, you know, <laughs> what you've done, if you feel good about, okay, boss, I think I'll do my best. I know that's the success. Yes, there will be many success of your TRB ratings, all that's a different that world it talks about. But what for you is like, you no, know, if you've gone to the bed, I think, you no, know, boss, I think, you know, right. Success actually also made this a, one of my uh, Linta's boss telling me, telling me, I think, boss, I think, you know, like uh, success is something, doing something, achieving some pre agreed uh, goal, whatever, you know, with a, using pre agreed resources in a pre agreed time. Otherwise, he had a, he gave me a quotation saying that. If you give a typewriter to a monkey and uh, elevate to type, after a million years, it may produce Othello. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, it's true for anybody. <laughs> if, uh, if, if, if I give you 100 crores and give you 10 years time and you know, create a brand, anybody can be a brand. But such is something, you know, doing something which you like, you know, you, what you determine, you know, uh, in, in advance with the resources which already allocated in a time frame, I think, you know, it's done. And that's like what success actually in terms of to uh, measure it out. In a measurable way, I think. You know. What is it that something that you deeply believe in, which nobody else around you agrees with you on? Same thing here. I think uh, people believe that no, if if you're a good if you're a good guy, you can't win. I mean, people tell me the boss. I think I'm told on my face. Even recently, recently somebody another one when you told me. Prasad, you're, you're, you're a too good a guy, like, you know, like, you're, 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 uh, success will always be hard for you to get. <laughs> because, like I said, my success is on the last day of my life, I go to with a smile, that's my success for me in life. Trust me, that will happen only if you if you live your life correct way. Today, I may, even if I ha- earn 1000 crores, but if I didn't earn it properly, on the last day of my life, there won't be a smile on my face for sure. That time, all will, will come back to hit you that time. If you were to invite three or four people for a dream dinner, who would they be and why? Dream dinner? <laughs> Tough one. You should at least alert me for this too. Dream dinner. Hey, it will be some of my... I have some amazing friends, in fact, I think. Actually, my dream dinner is like, you know, uh, if I leave my family outside, which anyway, I think, uh, I mean, I'm extremely lucky to have an amazing batch of IMA, my batch. We are, a, it's, it's not cliche, but we're one large family. So like I'm in Delhi tomorrow, I've already posted. So I had hundreds of dinners with the family. Every time like, you no, know, I'm more excited about the next dinner. So these guys, I think, you know, like it's amazing, like, you know, uh, they're all like successful, like, like the Nokri owner, I think, but when we get together, it's just like, you no, know, we are just back in the, like you're back in the campus. The same naughtiness, same kind of la- lingo we use. So that's really like my, to tell you very honestly, my dream night with my batchmates. 